Okay, welcome to lesson three of your Rainforest Poetry. Hopefully yesterday you got loads of ideas from the poems that we analysed together, a few short video clips, and you're ready to start writing your poetry today. We're going to watch a video first of all to talk about how we might consider how poetry is performed before we start writing our own, because actually the performance of poetry is just as important as writing it too. And we'll watch this video first to get us stimulated for today's creativity. What I love about poetry is that you can perform it anywhere. There are performance spaces all around us. In the bedroom, in the playground, on a balcony, even from outer space. Through poetry, I get to play with words and experiment with how I say different things. Sometimes I perform a poem loudly. loudly. The war drums boom and shake the metal from the land. Sometimes I perform a poem quietly. The tiny mouse peeps and creeps as you sleep. Sometimes I perform a poem quickly. Fantastic fireworks fizz with fiery flame. Or slowly. I was at the end of the race, about to cross the finish line. Or mix it up. The rain was pattering. Then the thunder boomed. The lightning zipped, zapped, snapped. I was drenched to the bone. When I'm performing a poem, I like to think about the tone of the poem. Is it a happy poem or a sad poem? Is it an angry poem or a confused poem? Thinking about emotions in this way can help make the meaning of the poem more easily understood by making the tone clear. The grey clouds wept, a bucket of rain down on me on the stone grey streets. Sometimes a poem is written in the actual voice of a character. And if so, I will think about what that character might sound like. I am the troll that lives under the bridge. I eat all manner of things. I once ate a fridge. As well as using your voice, you can also use your body when performing poems. You can perform a poem sitting. My granddad's chair was a big, leather, dusty thing where coins hid down the cushions. Or even laying down. Gazing up at the winter sky, I saw the snowflake form. You can also use actions. Your body can help bring a poem to life. Instead of just hearing the words, a body can help an audience see the world that the words create. I often learn a poem off by heart to free up my hands, using simple actions and gestures to highlight certain words and phrases. I crept past a tiger, ran up a mountain, leaped over a canyon and landed in a swamp. It's always lovely to notice the positive in a performance, to focus on what you noticed, what stood out, what made you smile and what you remember. Sometimes when I perform a poem, I run out of things to say about the poem. I find it helpful to keep a list of words nearby. Words like interesting, <coughs> dynamic, Exciting, thrilling, emotional, hard hitting. Growing up, I used to love putting on a show, but it took me a while to realize that you can pull on a show with poetry just about anywhere, using all your acting skills to entertain friends or even tell someone that you miss them can be a whole lot of fun. Now, I am sure that from that last video, you've got some better ideas now on how you might perform your poem and thinking quite carefully about the animal or the creature that you're writing about in your poetry is going to reflect how you then um, perform your poetry. So I found this one which is also by Kathy Payson, if I were a sloth. Now sloths are, as you know, very slow moving creatures who plod their way through the forest, they hang around. And I think if I was performing this poem I would think quite carefully about how I did that to sort of reflect the character of the sloth. If I were a sloth hanging from a tree, I could show the world my personality. I would see the world hanging upside down, dangling like a coconut high above the ground. I would nap all day in the canopy of the rainforest crocopia trees. I would move real slow, slow as slow can be. Hiding from Jaguar, my fierce enemy. I am nocturnal. 
I only play at night when the sun goes down. I like to grab a bite. I can whistle like a bird. I am really rare with my long, long arms. People like to stare. In my grey green coat, I will always thrive. I am a little sloth. I make the jungle jive. Now I read that with a very slow, plodding sort of rhythm to it because I think that's how a sloth would say it. So think about what you're writing about and your planning today and how you want your poetry to be performed. He's really cute. Now I showed you these images yesterday to start getting your ideas going for your own poetry and thinking about what descriptive elements you might want to magpie from poems and video clips that you've seen already. Lots of onomatopoeia, I think, is going to be appearing if you're going to be doing um, poetry about different animals from the forest. But today your task is to think about planning your own poem. So using the images, we'll watch another video clip here, and you're going to be putting all these ideas together on your poetic planning sheet. You've probably got some ideas there already from yesterday, and we're going to continue adding to that today. So we'll watch a video now, hopefully with a little bit more plant life, animal life, and again, a few more ideas to stimulate your poetic creativity.
Now I'm sorry to interrupt your video footage, but I just wanted to pull up my planning sheet as I was making notes whilst watching the video and I thought once you heard this section you could really hear some words that would be cool for your onomatopoeia section. So words that sound like um, the creatures of the rainforest, I could hear squawking. So this is a very strange spelling. Squawk or squawking. Try again. Yes. Like that so you can see it. Um, I can hear chirrups and um, howls perhaps in the background. And there's certainly some other sounds you can keep adding to that section there. So I just thought with the sounds of the rainforest in the background, yes you've got probably not got the water in this one but we can imagine water because we we know what rain sounds like, but some of those animal noises that you can hear constantly um, in the background, see if you can come up with some more words for this section. I'll let you play on. There's no shortage of fruit and nuts, but capuchins keep a sharp eye out for other opportunities too. Their hands are almost as dexterous as ours. Insects to birds' eggs, they eat just about anything they can find. Now you don't have to choose any of the animals or birds or creatures in the videos that you saw or anything that you've seen already this week. You might want to start constructing your own poem based around a completely new theme um, covering the whole of the rainforest. 
you might want to think about just the rainfall, you might want to consider the size of the trees, you might want to mention Mother Nature. There are lots of things that might inspire you about the rainforest life that lives there and exists there and has done for many thousands of years. And how you put together your poem is now completely up to you. When we had a look at um, different poems, I was particularly um, stimulated by the parrots and the Amazon rainbows that um, we looked at earlier. And these are the paragraphs, or sorry, verses I've put together based on my ideas of the cacophonous symphony of the birds all squawking as they all lift off together. Um, but I've talked it, about it in a sort of sequence of verses that cover how the rainforest wakes up in the morning, um, how they communicate with one another. Then I've got a verse here all about how they soar up into the sky, the amount of noise they make and how they might be described as rainbows, their colours, some onomatopoeia, um, and then I've mentioned the rain again at the end. So this is a poem I've written and I've just highlighted some of the words that I had on my plan and some of the ideas I had and then how I put them together in a poem of my own. I'll read it with you. The Amazon Rainbows. The rainforest awakens, creatures start to sing, brightly coloured birds sing love songs while insects rub their wings. Parrots sit proudly in the canopy like guardians of the sky, squawking to each other when startled off they fly. Swooping and gliding through the skies these brightly coloured birds soar heading up above the clouds before the rain begins to roar. The cacophonous symphony awakens, a natural orchestra begins, winged rainbows sing glorious love songs while teeming life rub their wings. Colourful palettes perch proudly in the canopy like guardians of heaven's gate. Chattering squawks fill the air, when startled they ascend at a tremendous rate. Swooping across the brilliant blue these Amazon kites soar, heading up to the mystical heavens before the downpour begins to roar. Now I've got a little bit of repetition of phrases, so I've used anaphora. I've magpied loads of ideas from some of the um, poems we've already written because I was particularly um, enamoured by those parrots and those macaws that as they all took off into the sky together and their colours and their noises and their sounds and hopefully have tried to capture that in a series of verses and I've used a rhyming structure as I've gone through the whole process and this is what I'd like you to do. So your task today is to start drafting your own poem using your planning and thinking about the poetic features and language choices that other poets have used and how you might magpie some of those into creating your own. Before you go today I'm going to leave you with one last poem that I'm going to read you through and see whether this gives you any more ideas for your own. The Children of the Rainforest Climb into the river, the Amazon awakes, the rush of green and calm for your soul to partake. A test of time and travel in a native carved canoe, a botanical garden breathing new life into you. The breath of paradise singing in waves of praise, silence in the sanctity of her amazing gaze. Drifting through rain, soft rain, where poised trees reside, rooted in majestic earth, praying they can provide. Provisions for tomorrow, for children of each race, far from noisy cities where humans fall from grace. It is in her rich bounty where earth's harvests life, cutting down her honour marks the dawn of strife. Gather all living thoughts into the balm of this river, heal the Amazon rainforest and the life that she delivers. Cast your heart into her waters as you drift through your days. We are the children of the rainforest, products of her loving ways. Now this poem is much deeper, it covers the idea of deforestation and how we need to protect Earth's rich bounty. When it talks about her, I think it's a reference to Mother Nature, and you've got that structure all the way through, some really lovely sorry, language choices in words like poised and majestic, um, some really good word choices that they've thought about. Um, talking about cutting down her honour. So it's something here about deforestation um, and the strife of this, which is all the, the bad things that go alongside it. You've got some lovely language over here, like sanctity and paradise, and almost this idyllic picture of the rainforest 
which we are destroying as humans. So maybe you want your poem to have more of a message and that's your choice today. So just to refer back what you're doing, you're drafting your poem, using those planning frames and sheets, lots of ideas. I'm hoping you're going to come up with something really spectacular. I look forward to reading the music. Good luck.